So I'm really excited for today's video as we're gonna look at whether Tesla is taking the right approach in training Optimus. The article we are looking at comes from Mr. Kumar who is currently a PhD student at MIT focused on AI and machine learning applied to robotics. And from November 6th to November 9th, Mr. Kumar attended the Conference on Robotic Learning. And in this article, he is going to outline the debate that transpired around whether scaling can solve robotics. Or in other words, whether training a large neural network on a very large data set is a feasible way to solve robotics. Of course, this is basically what Tesla is doing. While it's not just one large neural network that makes up FSD, but 48 sub neural networks that all work cohesively, Tesla is still training this large network using a very large data set. So this article is going to explore whether Tesla is taking the right approach in this regard. So with the success of ChatGPT over the last few years, the debate at the conference moved into developing a general purpose robot, one that can competently and robustly execute a wide variety of tasks of interest in any home. This has been perhaps the holy grail of robotics since the inception of the field. And guys, this is what Tesla is working on. And given the recent progress of foundation models, it seems possible that scaling these models might actually be the key to that grail. And guys, this is what Tesla is doing. So now Kumar is going to outline the arguments made over the weekend that he heard in favor of scaling as a solution to robotics. This paragraph outlines why training robotics on large amounts of data should work because it works so well for computer vision and natural language processing training. Training a large model on all of this data led to astounding progress on problems that were thought to be impossible just three to four years ago. So there's no reason why shouldn't have the same incredible performance on robotics tasks. In the next two paragraphs, it talks about some evidence that show that this is working. And it's also showing the progress in data and compute, which attests to the main idea that simple algorithms that scale well with data will always outperform more complex algorithms that do not. Improvements to data and compute are like a wave that is bound to happen. And riding this wave means recognizing all the progress that's happened because of large data and large models and then developing algorithms to take advantage of this progress. It means leveraging pre-trained models from vision and language that currently exist or will exist for robotics tasks. And this is what Tesla did in response to the success of GPT. They rethought the way they were approaching FSD and they transitioned to an end-to-end -end model. In Optimus, they took the vision model that they had already trained in FSD and just put that into Optimus. They're going to take Grok, the language model they've already created and just put it into Optimus. Little boosts in robotics now from other fields. Everything is starting to piece together. And I think the advancements in robotics coming in the next five years are going to come faster than anyone is expecting. So this paragraph is basically saying we need to learn by doing. Let's find one really, really simple task that a robot could do. Let's train that task on a large model. And then we'll take what we learn from that to try to get to this more general manifold of robotics tasks. This is exactly the approach that Tesla took. They recently just trained a model for Optimus to teach it how to sort and unsort blocks. And through training Optimus on this task with an end-to-end -end model, they're going to learn a lot about how to train Optimus on new tasks in the future. But here's a really important paragraph, and that is that all tasks do require some common sense capabilities which is going to pervade all of robotics. So consider the task of having a mobile manipulation robot place a mug onto a table. Even if we ignore the challenging problems of finding and localizing the mug, there are a surprising number of subtleties that arise. What if the table is cluttered and the robot has to move other objects out of the way? What if the mug accidentally falls on the floor and the robot has to pick it up again and place it on the table? What if the mug has something in it? These edge cases are more common than it might seem. And so funny, like, the sorting and unsorting task that Tesla trained Optimus on, these things happen. You have a guy being adversary to the Optimus. He's moving the blocks around and Optimus has to have common sense to adjust. One of the blocks even tips over and Optimus picks it back up and puts it upright. These things Tesla is already taking on and the fact that it was trained on a scaling model, an end-to-end -end neural network, and Optimus is adjusting and doing these things suggests that they're showing Optimus videos of humans doing these tasks and Optimus has seen humans and how it's supposed to be done. And that's why it is correcting itself and doing things correctly. So I'm surprised Tesla is not mentioned in this paragraph. So now we're going to move into the people who argue that scaling might not work. Some said that the approach is impractical. 
and some said that even if it does work, it doesn't really solve robotics. So this paragraph argues that it's impractical because we currently don't have much robotics data and there's no clear way to get it. It's not like the computer vision models or the natural language processing models where you can just scour the internet for all of this data. Like how are we going to get all of this data to train our robotics models and test the solution as you can see in this video is they're using camera equipment equipped on the head of humans to perform the tasks that they want Optimus to do. And for the more simple factory tasks, this is a possible way to train these data sets. And as we get into the more generalist robot tasks in the future, what you could possibly do if you're Tesla is create an app store that incentivizes developers to come on board and also take part in gathering data, real world data to train these robots because developers can take the footage themselves, upload the app to the app store, and then people can download it to teach Optimus a new skill. This seems to be the most likely form Tesla takes to gathering a lot of real world data and solving this impractical problem. This paragraph says that it's impractical because robots have different embodiments. We have different shapes and sizes. The output control actions that are sent to Boston Dynamics Spot Robot which we have covered on this channel, it's basically a dog, are very different to those sent to a KUKA arm. This is why Elon's first principles thinking is so important. He looked at the world and he saw a world designed for humans. So he made a humanoid robot. Boom, problem solved, next paragraph. This paragraph explores the problem that we need the robot to be able to operate in any possible home, factory, or office building it finds itself in. And you know, collecting a data set that has even just one example of every possible building seems impractical. We don't know how much data is going to be required and it could be impractically large. So I think Tesla's solution to this is they've developed a robust data labeling system. So FSD, for example, it's gotten really good at telling what an object is in the real world. I've seen the visualization on the Tesla screen on the dashboard in your vehicle that can literally tell the difference between a cat and a dog. So when Optimus is in your kitchen, it's going to be able to tell the difference between a spoon and a fork, a bowl and a plate. And in the factory, if you need Optimus to operate a machine that maybe it's never seen before, you can probably get it to read the entire manual on its little internet brain. So I think Tesla's work on full self-driving in their cars is going to make Optimus easily be able to navigate any factory or home. The next paragraph is worried that training a model on such a large robotics data set is too expensive and energy intensive. No academic lab has these kinds of resources. Does anybody know of a company that has like the world's most amount of compute and energy storage? What is that? Now we're getting into the argument suggesting that scaling is never going to solve robotics. And this paragraph argues that it will never solve robotics because we're never going to get to like a 99.9% .9 success rate. And Elon's solution to this is to train the models with beta testers this is what full self-driving is doing. Because right now, you know, it's not at that 99% success rate. It's not five to 10 times safer than a human. So we're training it in assistance with a human. And this is actually helping Tesla scale and get to that 99% safely because it's really hard to get there safely if you don't have supervision. Same with Optimus. Tesla has the luxury of testing Optimus in its own facilities. This paragraph just says that even ChatGPT is not at 99.9% .9 reliability. Okay, so Tesla is finally mentioned in this paragraph, so I'm actually going to read it. Self-driving car companies have tried this approach and it doesn't fully work. This is closely related to the above point, but important and subtle enough that I think it deserves to stand on its own. A number of self-driving car companies, most notably Tesla and Wave, have tried training such an end-to-end -end big model on large amounts of data to achieve level five autonomy. I'm gonna interrupt here and say, Tesla has not fully investigated training their end-to-end -end model yet. That is going to be FSD V12. What was out before V12 involved a lot of heuristic code. It was not totally end-to-end. -to -end. So this is false. Not only do these companies have the engineering resources and money to train such models, but they also have the data. Tesla in particular has a fleet of over 100,000 cars. This is wrong. It's more closer to 450,000. Deployed in the real world that is constantly collecting and then annotating data from. These cars are being teleoperated by experts, making the data ideal for large-scale supervised learning. And despite all this, Tesla has so far been unable to produce a level five autonomous driving system. That's not to say their approach doesn't work at all. It completely handles a large number of situations. 
However, it's far from the 99.x performance. Moreover, data seems to suggest that Tesla's approach is faring far worse than Waymo or Cruise. Oh boy. So this makes the guy seem uninformed because of the Cruise debacle that happened recently. This article was updated two days ago. And of course, the conference was from November 6th to November 9th. So the fact that this guy is not caught up to Cruise, it just doesn't look good. If you don't know, Cruise recently shut down operations because it came out that one and a half people were supervising these vehicles and controlling them remotely, and that they were never autonomous in the first place, despite them marketing them as autonomous vehicles. So with that being said, I'll just fast forward to the end of the paragraph where they say that Tesla's case should give us reason to doubt that their approach is a solution to robotics. But if they're not even caught up on cruise, then take that with a grain of salt. Okay, this is a really interesting paragraph, so I'm actually going to read this one too. It says, Many robotics tasks of interest are quite long horizon. Accomplishing any task requires taking a certain number of correct actions in sequence. Consider the relatively simple problem of making a cup of tea, given an electric kettle, water, a box of tea bags, and a mug. Success requires pouring the water into the kettle, turning it on, then pouring the hot water into the mug and placing a tea bag inside it. If we want to solve this with a model trained to output motor torque commands given pixels as input, we'll need to send torque commands to all seven motors at around 40 hertz. Let's suppose that this tea making task requires five minutes. That requires seven times 40 times six times five or 84,000 correct torque commands. This is all just for a stationary robot arm. Things get much more complicated if the robot is mobile or has more than one arm, in Optimus's case, and two legs. It is well known that error tends to compound with longer horizons for most tasks. This is one reason why, despite their ability to produce long sequences of text, even large language models cannot yet produce completely coherent novels or stories. Small deviations from a true prediction over time tend to add up and yield extremely large deviations over long horizons. Given that most, if not all, robotics tasks of interest require sending at least thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of torques in just the right order, even a fairly well-performing model might really struggle to fully solve these robotics tasks. So this paragraph just really puts into perspective how complicated it is to get Optimus to do even one task. And after reading this paragraph, if we go back and look at Optimus sorting and unsorting blocks, it's really assuring that they actually did have somebody being antagonistic to Optimus because it gives me a lot of confidence that you know, you can divide a task into subtasks and that Optimus is going to be able to do it extremely reliably. I mean, you can see the dexterity in Optimus's hands. You can see the intelligence in how he deals with the adversary and how he deals with the block falling over. If you train one task at a time and you get developers to help train more tasks, this thing can really scale and I think that it can really work. So Kumar says, now that we've sketched out all the main points on both sides of the debate, I want to spend some time diving into a few related points. And he says, one point that gets brought up a lot is the lack of theoretical guarantees with neural networks. We know very little about neural network theory. We don't really know why they learn well. And more importantly, we don't have any guarantees on what values they will output in different situations. And on the other hand, most classical control and planning approaches that are widely used in robotics have various theoretical guarantees built in. These are generally quite useful when certifying that systems are safe. Companies like Waymo rely more on classical control as they develop their systems that they still use today about 12 years ago. Scott of Boston Dynamics talked about how they're deploying their controllers on their robots in production and are able to get the confidence and guarantees they need via regular simulation and real world testing. These types of companies argue that maybe we don't need to collect that much real world data for scaling. And do they actually believe this or are they just not as well positioned as Tesla to actually get real world data? Seem like most of the people over the weekend thought that combining the classical and the new learning based approaches will give us the best of both worlds as overall, most people seem to argue that this middle path is extremely promising, especially in the short to medium term but perhaps in the long term, either pure learning or an entirely different set of approaches might be best. And of course, Tesla is taking this risk. They're betting all on pure learning. It's really just first principles thinking. If that's how humans learn, then let's try and replicate that because humans have proven to learn. After all, 
Every one of the current approaches that's part of the debate was only made possible because the few researchers that introduced them dared to think against the popular grain of their times. And here is a clip of Elon to prove that he thought against the grain, that he approached robotics, that he approached full self-driving in this new way that nobody believed in. And Tesla is going to prove everybody wrong. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. Guys, full self-driving V12, this new way of learning completely end-to-end -end neural nets is rolling out to employees. FSD is now about to also roll out to China. We're gonna double the amount of beta testers. This is happening. Compute is ramping, scaling is underway. I can't wait to watch it all unfold. Subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching.